The Apollo Hospital's Health of the Nation 2024 report recently released sheds light on notable and concerning health trends within the country. The report points out that over the past two decades, non-communicable diseases or NCDs have become the primary cause of mortality in India. Cancer in particular looms large, with India on track to earn the unfortunate title of cancer capital of the world. The report, in fact, paints a chilling picture, projecting a surge in cancer cases from 13.9 lakh in 2020 to a staggering 15.7 lakh cases by 2025. Moreover, the report highlights a concerning rise in mental health disorders, especially amongst individuals aged 18 to 40 years. Depression is notably prevalent amongst the younger demographic, with one in five individuals aged 18 to 25 experiencing symptoms. Chronic stress, particularly prevalent amongst young adults and seniors, contributes to a heightened incidence of hypertension and diabetes, with women facing a heightened risk. Obesity, a precursor to NCDs, is also on the rise, with a majority of individuals presenting with unhealthy waist-to-hip ratios and belly fat. The report further highlights increasing prevalence of lifestyle diseases such as high blood pressure and pre-diabetes, particularly amongst younger individuals. However, amidst these concerning statistics, the report emphasizes the importance of early screening and proper monitoring. Early detection of conditions such as breast cancer significantly improves survival rates while regular health monitoring leads to tangible improvements in blood glucose, blood pressure and body weight management. Today, on this episode of The Medicine Box, we've got Dr. Shri Vidya and Dr. Ashish Johan to break down the statistics of this report. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Well, Dr. Srividya, let's start with you. You know, the report highlights a significant rise in cancer cases in India, with India probably being called the cancer capital of the world soon enough as well. How much is due to statistics because of a large population, aging population, and how much is attributable to environmental factors? Hi, good afternoon, and thank you very much for having us here. The statistics is definitely very, very alarming because we are looking at increasing in the numbers of cancer, different type of cancer, also the age at which we are detecting it. The reason, like, like you said, the twofold reason is very simple. We are living longer, but not healthier. We are screening more, but still not enough. And of course, a lot of lifestyle changes, for example, Obesity itself is a individual risk factor for multiple malignancies. Uh, smoking, increased smoking, increased alcohol, uh, poor lifestyle balances, to name a few. I can go on and on. But spe specifically, we are uh, living faster, but not smarter. What is the reason for the rise of cancer cases in younger adults, which the report highlights? Adaption of or more and more uh, smoking among the younger age group, smoking in women, uh, uh, the, the pollution, a lot of genetic factors, and the fact that we are not... Uh, changing any of these things we are continuing we are, for, we are we are in love with trying to become one with the western countries but we don't realize that the western countries have gone through that hyperbole where they had all these hype increased we are not un taking any lessons from them okay could you elaborate a little further in terms of what um, we are doing wrong or what we are aping say when it comes to western practices uh, which is probably resulting in this rise in, you know, cases of cancer amongst the younger population. So we, we are very happy with eating so much of processed food. I can start from there. So much of additive and coloring agents go into that. We do not even know what are the things which are being used in those preservatives. We don't read the label. So we we will, because it is easier, much more, much more cheaper. So we are adapting it. How many of us regularly do all these online uh, uh, in, uh, instant food delivery system without knowing what is going into that. Smoking in younger children and women is one of the biggest cancer, uh, biggest risk for cancer among women. 
and uh, alcohol. Three, these three basic things are causing a havoc in our society. Uh, Dr. Srividya, what proactive measures can be taken to address the increasing burden of uh, cancer in India, especially amongst the younger population? There is a chance that with this type of high-risk behavior, I am at a very, I am at a high uh, risk for developing cancer. The second is to stop living in the world of denial. Nothing will happen to me. Oh, so what if I cannot enjoy life today? With every freedom comes a certain responsibility to ourselves. So if we stop living in denial, if we are not going to run away from screening programs, which is going to tell us what exactly is my risk, what exactly is my risk, where, where it, so there's a family history, there is an environmental history, there is a national level risk factor. If we are able to understand that all this applies to each and every Indian, then we are at least at a place where we can pick it up earlier and resolve it acceptance of the risk problem and not to live in the world of denial will hasten early screening, will ensure adequate uh, treatment plan and prevent complications. Okay, all right, fair enough. Uh, you know, one of the statistics which do, do stand out is that, and it's quite alarming to see that colon cancer, which was once associated mainly with older individuals, is now also affecting younger people. I think around 30% of patients at Apollo hospitals are below the age of 50. What factors contribute to this shift and how can early detection and intervention strategies be improved to combat this trend? Um, the increasing uh, colon cancer is actually very, very scary. We, uh, again, I will go back to the type of food we are eating. We are eating processed food. There is, a very, there is a huge lack of fiber in our diet, a huge lack of uh, protein in our diet. We do not like to get colonoscopy done in people who have high uh, family risk of malignancy. We are seeing increase in GI malignancy, including the upper GI and lower GI in vegetarians, which is a very, very strong indicator that there is a genetic proponent. And it is added upon by, again, smoking and lack of diet and lack of awareness. How do we correct it? Advocate colonoscopy. Like, for example, in the U.S., colonoscopy once in three years is mandatory part of every insurance. We do not have that type of a protocol in India. Colonoscopy is a little cumbersome to do, so people avoid doing it. Okay, all right, fair enough. That point is taken. Uh, but Dr. Chauhan, you know, maybe you can also come in on this, considering that you do read diabetes patients. Uh, there's a lot of focus in terms of the food that we eat, um, and that's also linked to the health of the colon. But in a way, if you could just throw light in terms of the kind of food uh, most people consume or Indians consume, and what you think needs to change. Processed food and smoked fish, these are the few things, you know, where we just kind of are open to anything which is available, fried stuff and, and you know, all the apps which provide it us. I would quote one cardiologist and probably all oncologists also will agree to it. It's all, you want to live longer? Rukha, sukha, pika. You need to eat a food which does not have too much of salt, sugar or spices. Say as an Indian, we eat a lot of spicy food and a lot of salt stuff. Who lives the longest? If we go by the statistics and if we see various countries, China and Japan, Japan, these are the people where they have the, the, the old population, which is pretty uh, huge in number. Why do they do that? Check their food and it is absolutely bland. Indians will not be able to accept that kind of food. We need to work on the kind of food which we are eating it, number one. Number two is regular exercise. Obviously, COVID has made most of us and our children a couch potato. We need to understand going out. You want to live for 100 years? 100 minutes of exercise per day. Whatever, irrespective of caste, creed, and gender, everybody should be uh, knowing it that they need to go out. And definitely screening, when in doubt. Say one punchline which I would want all the viewers to remember is go to a doctor when you do not need him. Go to a doctor when you do not need him and you will never need him. Say going to a doctor for a, for a checkup, health checkup, a regular health checkup, will it detect cancer much, much earlier and take my words, we'll be able to give fantastic result with very less investment or cost involved. But people are hesitant. 
they're hesitant to come to doctor they're hesitant to trust a doctor and probably that's a disaster uh, regime recipe which we get it so you must come to to hospital before it is too late to be able to live healthy happy and smiling always this is what i would want everybody to remember this and definitely okay. last point to remember is insurance we need to have a universal insurance because that is what keeps people out of it corporates and the big it's and everybody should in, should incorporate uh, insurance as well as health checkup as a regular part of a regime for whole family not the employee alone okay all right that point is taken uh, well you know just to, uh, just to extend that point that dr johan said that if you go see a doctor when you don't need the doctor you're not going to need the doctor that often uh, the screening rates for cancer in india are strikingly low compared to the global standards uh, dr shri vidya why are screening rates so low what is the importance of it and what steps do we need to take in order to enhance screening the, the most important thing about screening is that people are afraid ki i go and find out then something will come up and then I, i don't want to know that i have some problem for example cervical cancer is one of the biggest cancer in women at a younger age group associated with a viral infection and most of these viral infections are asymptomatic pap smear has been part of our screening program mass screening program in india for the last 20 30 years that i know of since i have been in medical school we can write thesis and thesis on it but adoption of pap smear even today is around 5 to 6% but because of the prevalence of vaccine and adoption of vaccine the cervical cancer rate has come down so the screening program has to be very robust very focused pick up your his family history whatever is your risk factor do a focused screening say if it is colon cancer upper gi cancer breast cancer do not run away from screening early solution means no complications we cannot live in a world where we close our eyes and think it is dark everywhere okay all right fair enough uh, that point is taken where well, we shouldn't probably behave like an ostrich in that case but uh, disparities in healthcare guidelines such as say the psa threshold for prostate cancer screening that's been noted in the report as, as well how can these guidelines be adapted to better suit the indian demographic and what challenges need to be overcome in this process the psa study per se has been done on indian population of almost 1 lakh asymptomatic men with prostate specific antigen test in their uh, lab report in the part of the health the most astonishing thing which has come out of this is we found that younger age people the cut off for abnormal psa is also lower so it is not one uh, range of reading for everybody from 40 to 80 the older the age higher is the cut off for psa we have to adapt it into our system once we have the uh, validation from the oncology uh, um, societies and the urology society we are waiting for that because all these days we were doing this psa uh, range uh, cut offs using a very small caucasian data which is not even applicable to the indians so the the astonishing thing which came is that we do not have to crucify all our elderly people who got a marginally elevated psa thinking oh they are at a high risk for cancer similarly we will not be missing out on our younger men because their cut off is much lower than the actual range Okay all right uh, are these changes being implemented um, say for example in the polo hospitals we are uh, implementing it eventually i mean it is already being used in a couple of hospitals because it's a validation process and we are in the process of getting it and we are really looking forward to much more data in it in the next couple of years okay well let's move uh, beyond cancer now mental health disorders especially dis- depression are on the rise amongst young adults with one in five individuals aged 18 to 25 experiencing symptoms is mental health an unspoken issue in india what were the key trends which emerged in the uh, report dr vedya the uh, the way this mental health uh, has come out is again we are 
even scared to say that you know what i am feeling low today the minute i say i go oh do you are you going to a clinical psychologist are you going to a therapist it's a taboo one of the reason why we are not even addressing that how did we find out we have incorporated two major uh, public domain or pub easily available questionnaire in the form of phq and gad 9 uh, into our health check questionnaire and we found out that there is a very very high preponderance of moderate see the mild ones are able to handle severe ones go to the therapist it is the moderate people the in between people who don't know whether they are supposed to get their treatment done or they are they need to and by the time they realize it they are already into the high risk or the severe uh, depression or uh, anxiety category with every comorbid or every ncd we have an anxiety and depression attached lack of sleep insomnia there is depression diabetes there is anxiety and depression cancer there is anxiety and depression and hypertension comes with the word tension already in it okay all right dr johan uh, i see you nodding your head so tell us more about what you see when it comes to mental health pressures uh, in your diabetic patients as well as maybe the younger ones and those who have type 1 diabetes oh diabetes and depression goes hand in hand i call the word diet every diabetic is depressed insomnia erectile dysfunction we don't like to talk about sex and definitely tired these are the lot of issues which are happening stress and uh, tension we need to address it and it needs to be addressed right from the school time i've had a uh, 18 uh, eighth class boy who committed suicide because he was not made monitor because of some reason we have to understand say majority of indians we all think that stress is only something associated with the old people with us not our children and that is where we are missing it out especially during covid we have learnt it that again stress has entered every house and every religion and and caste creed irrespective of where you come from which strata you come from so that needs to be addressed and that needs to be done at the grassroot level by the time it reaches us it it complicates either in the form of uh, you know heart attack paralysis or even cancer so you need to understand stress causes diabetes and hypertension and diabetes and hypertension finally cause heart attack paralysis and cancer and everything else so these things all are kind of intermingled and we as a responsible citizen of of our country we need to help our uh, uh, you know healthcare providers as well as the school authorities to work together for the healthy society it cannot be just done like this i'll just give one answer one of the very very renowned gentlemen said the young generation should work for 70 hours a week take my words that's a that's a disaster therapy we are lacking on our sleep and sleep lack causes diabetes and hypertension and definitely cancer so 8 hours of work 8 hours of you know sleep and eight hours of friends and family that's what something which we need to work on it that's what i would want everybody to understand Dr. Shree, with your any tangible recommendations in terms of stress management and to reduce chronic stress, there is this rule of eight, eight, eight. You need to ensure that you are sleeping for eight hours, you are working for eight hours, and the rest eight hours is for yourself. You know, to do what you want. What is happening today is in that eight hours is either going into recreational, maybe, but mostly into work. So if somebody is working for sixteen hours and they are only sleeping for eight hours. uh moving away from screen time the more screen time increase mental health because you are only living in a virtual world connectivity with your outside with your peers with your family uh is very very important not understanding the requirement of the person we need to listen to people 
once we listen then you have solution no sometimes it's just important to be there and not offer solution the solution comes as the person keeps talking or connecting with the with your peer so form a peer group peer circle be empathetic be there for your family and friends walk as much as possible that's one of the best workout which you can do you don't need to register with expensive gym and workout places and all be active be proactive connect with your peer pressure and be empathetic okay all right dr chauhan now um, you know obesity rates they are escalating with the majority of individuals having unhealthy waist to hip ratios and belly fat especially within the indian community what is the risk of obesity how serious a problem is it in india it's increasing very fast and and kind of entering every household what we need to understand it is obesity does not run in the family the problem is nobody runs in the family we have to understand the importance of diet and exercise we have to understand to live longer cannot be done only by the medicines we have to understand yes uh, having a regular workouts is needed that's why a very good organization like that of even apollo also within the hospital for the doctors they have kept the the you know treadmill treadmill and machines and all have been kept so corporates also are, are, are kind of encouraging this kind of culture we have to understand at the younger age only we have to say no to the lips we have to say no to the processed food and the spicy food and the salt and sugar and we have to say yes to the healthy lifestyle you have to say the yes to the healthy positive uh, mental health you know the workouts which we do it all right similarly high blood pressure and pre diabetes they becoming increasingly common especially amongst the younger demographic is it lifestyle and stress linked uh, what has changed to result in these rising rates dr chauhan i think the 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 good thing if we can say from this is pick up rate has increased say we as a, a, a responsible uh, citizen we are also picking up much earlier through various gadgets through various means the only thing we need to understand it is yes uh, post covid we have gone into this uh, era where their online education has been promoted children have been accidentally or made to be the couch potatoes so everything comes together the diet the exercise the mental and the the work life balance is all things needs to be inculcated right from the childhood we have to make sure ki people are tuned to uh, having uh, enough and enough space as well as environment so that they are into every day my children they are having holidays but they go for swimming they go for basketball and we have to inculcate that thing and we need, which we actually have to make sure it's a part of our you know uh, function Okay all right uh, well we'll just end the show by asking Dr Shri Vidya about the report uh, which emphasizes the importance of early screening and monitoring for better health outcomes what is the type of early screening you recommend for these lifestyle diseases Dr Shri Vidya so there are two type of uh, screening which we do one is a general screening which you can go and get it done in most of our units is um, specifically for like women uh, gender based age based um the requirement corporate health checks and all other but the most important part of the whole thing is that it is doctor centric you need to have a doctor give you an answer as to once a doctor says you are risk free we will tell you also most doctors will tell you how frequently you have to do the health check that comes to what we call as personalized health checks in which your risk score your lifestyle your eating habit is taken into consideration your mental health status and we drive so telling them this is your personalized risk score when we have something which is working in tandem we are taking care of the community we are taking care of the individual we are taking care of the community which is being made by 10 or 100 such individuals and multiple communities are we are taking care of the health of the nation and that is where we what is we found Okay all right Dr Vidya as well as uh, Dr Chauhan it's been a complete pleasure uh, thank you very much for joining in and bringing us all of the insights in the Apollo Health of the Nation report thanks very much for joining in thank you very thanks much thanks a lot it's a pleasure joining you